Hello, I'm Robin McKenzie. I'm a physiotherapist. Welcome to New Zealand. I think I've come across something that seems to be rather important. I think I felt that Rob could do anything. I think he thought he could too. When he walked in, there was an immediate presence. He was a very humble man despite what he had achieved and he was world recognised. I mean, he had friends from all walks of life, from bank robbers all the way through to the Governor General. Incredibly generous. He couldn't do enough for you. He was an original thinker. He wouldn't necessarily take a conventional path. He would go his own way and he had the courage to do this. Very, very confident in his own judgment and his own abilities. He was inquisitive. You know, he took this boat out, not knowing how to sail. And he was in some horrendous storms, managed them all very well. I mean, he became a very expert yachtsman. Robin could have gone off to America in the early 80s and been rich and famous beyond his dreams. And he was pursuing a bigger objective that had nothing to do with his ego, had nothing to do with making him rich or famous. It had everything to do with him wanting to know how he could best help his patients. He was totally committed to his treatment method and to his patients, but also when he, when he uh, was relaxing, we had some great parties. He was a wonderful character, great raconteur. He was very interested in low back pain. So when he first started, he visited all the doctors in Wellington. They would send him patients, but always, no matter what problem they had, it's always written on the back of the form was heat, massage and exercise. Whatever they decided it had to be because their word was law. And a mere physio, well, who was he to know any better than them? It would be unheard of for a physiotherapist to challenge the opinion of a doctor. It was expected that you'd accept it. It was just like the king had spoken to you. The doctors really felt that they were, um, you know, peer. <laughs> he was becoming more and more frustrated because he could see that this was making them feel better, but no cure. He was genuinely altruistic. He had the patient's interests at heart. He was courageous in, in the way that he pursued his goals, which were, I want to do the best for my patients. He'd been suffering from back pain for six weeks and Robin was busy with another patient at the time and he said to Mr Smith, go through to the other room and lie face down on the bed. Unbeknown to Robin, the bed was in an upright sitting position. And when I came back, I went in there and I looked at Mr Smith, oh my God, because that position was supposedly very harmful. And I said to him, uh, Mr Smith, how are you feeling? He said, this is the best I've been in six weeks. He wanted things to be substantiated. Show me the evidence. And if there wasn't evidence, he would go and get it. He would test it. And so what happened after that, he began a systematic process of putting patients in certain positions, particularly that one, and seeing what would happen. He viewed thousands of patients and documented the results and began to work out a system, which has later become the McKenzie Method. He informed his GPs that he was onto something. Their response was more that he was becoming a threat or dangerous. At the time, there were four orthopedic surgeons. Three of them were rabidly opposed to manipulation, which what Robin was doing. One of the senior surgeons, the top guy, tried to have Robin disbarred. They began to stop referring patients. He had to second mortgage the house. So he was struggling to make ends meet as he was 
uncovering more and more. He was always swimming against the tide. I think that just made him even more determined. He went to the US to speak at a, a large conference of 2,000 orthopedic surgeons and described his findings. Someone stood up and said, Mr. McKenzie, we've been into the spine, we've looked in detail within the spine and what you're describing does not occur. And Robin had the wind knocked out of his sails because these were orthopedic surgeons after all and he was just a physio. He would come home from out in the big wide world really psychologically battered from all the ridicule and hostility that he faced that he didn't anticipate. And as a way of rebuilding that, he would build these beautiful brick walls around the garden and grow roses up them. You know, there's something that I am good at. Maybe 15 years later, he's attending another meeting and he sees the same orthopedic surgeon walking towards him. This surgeon says to him, Robin, you might remember the last time we met, I was quite hard on you. I want to apologize. I was completely wrong in what I said. You were completely right. Against great odds, he persevered when most people would have given up. He bumped into one of these surgeons in the lift, a man called Vert Mooney. If what you've described here today, Mr. McKenzie, is correct, then I'm performing a great number of spinal surgeries that are unnecessary. And Vert Mooney was one of the early ones to back him. To me, that was his turning point. That's where confidence stemmed. He was booked up. People became interested in his methodology. And he went about writing the book, Treat Your Own Back. From 1980, when he published his first Treat Your Own Back book, Robin McKenzie totally understood that any of our treatments have to be patient-centred. So Robin McKenzie understood that long before anyone else. Letters would come here from all over the world. Patients who were resigned to the fact that they were going to live the rest of their lives as invalids. And they found this little book. Look, I'm back in the workforce. I'm alive again. He would read them to me and he would tears in his eyes every time. Being made the citizen of Texas and something else in Russia and a doctorate of somewhere, somewhere else. So many, he barely talked about those. Well, Robin recognised that posture was critical. You must sit correctly, have the correct posture for this treatment to work at all. In order to maintain that lumbar lordosis, keep the hollow in your back, you really need to use a lumbar support. So he said, in my mind, I think I could visualise a, um, a roll. This happens to be <laughs> the very original McKenzie lumbar roll. My mother crafted that at the dining room table and the original Mackenzie lumbar roll was born. It's the first one made in the world. We have a carefully designed and well thought out and well trialled and tested range of back supports and we are about to launch our signature range where we've improved the quality, improved the finish. They went about establishing the institute. Now the McKenzie Institute is in 28 different countries, teaching in 40 countries. Throughout the United States, Canada, Europe, Britain. And he found that he just couldn't keep up with the demand. The people who are the most important within the institute were driven by the same ideology as Robin. When Robin was there, people would follow instructions just because it was Robin and they, they had such trust and affection in him. The principles are just as strong as they were when he was alive. There's an internal structure within the Institute where, where there's ongoing critique, where there's ongoing development going on all the time. The structure of the spine doesn't change and the system works and always has worked. So the, the, the fundamentals of the system will not change. It's been shown 
in the US that McKenzie clinicians are reducing the incidence of spinal surgeries by 75%. And so we listen to the patients. And as a result of listening to the patients and a couple of chance clinical observations, I think I've come across something that seems to be rather important. There are, if you understand things properly, other movements that you can perform and other positions that you get into that reduce the distortion. That means that the answer to common low back pain does not lie in the absorption of large quantities of medicines and drugs and pills and the answer does not lie in surgery. The answer lies in your hands once we've equipped you with the right information.